It was a good year to be a horror fan. Hey guys, Noah from Watch Mojo here, and today we're counting down the top 10 horror movies of 2019. Ah! It's my grandmother. For this list, we'll be looking at the most successful and critically acclaimed horror movies of 2019. To be included on the list, the movie must have been released in 2019. So movies that received a limited release in 2018 and foreign movies previously released in other countries won't be included. What we did last night, we did for Ellie. Well, that's your cat now. Number 10, Ma. Octavia Spencer as a villain in a horror movie was far from what we expected, but life is full of surprises. She plays the titular Ma, Sue Ann Ellington, a lonely but seemingly hip woman who invites high school students to party at her house. You guys wanna party like rock stars? However, things start turning bloody and the typical horror shenanigans ensue. With this movie, Spencer proves that she can play anything, including a vengeful murderer, and the movie is worth watching just for her performance. I don't wanna hang out at Ma's anymore. Don't make me drink alone. Don't make me drink alone. Max, I want you to meet someone. Nice to meet you, Maggie. That said, it also tells a rather intriguing story about revenge, and if that's your thing, then Ma is your movie. Hey guys, that bitch is crazy. Probably something wrong with me. Number nine, Crawl. We don't see many monster flicks in the horror category nowadays. Luckily, we got a good one this year. Crawl serves as a wonderful and nostalgic throwback to old-timey monster movies, this time concerning alligators who stalk the survivors of a devastating hurricane. As with most creature features, you're not supposed to take the movie seriously. It's just a good bit of fun, and it delivered all that it promised and more. It features a superb lead performance from Kaya Scodelario, some quote, bloody creature violence, as the MPAA so beautifully puts it, and surprisingly good production values. It also did great at the box office, scoring a $90 million worldwide haul, proving that there's still a market for harmless, cheesy horror. Woo! Apex Predator all day! Number eight, Dr. Sleep. It's no easy feat to follow up a masterpiece like Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, but if there's any director most fit for the task, it's the man behind such modern horror hits like The Haunting of Hill House and Hush, Mike Flanagan. Doctor Sleep acts as a sequel to the 1980 version of The Shining, as well as an adaptation of Stephen King's 2013 book, Doctor Sleep, and while there are a few hiccups in finding the right tone for the movie, Flanagan and his cast deliver a thrilling new addition to the Overlook canon. Ewan McGregor brings home an extremely nuanced performance as Danny Torrance, while the film offers a few bone-chilling scares and nods to the source materials that will be sure to keep you up at night. Come and play with us forever and ever. Number 7, Child's Play. Was anyone clamoring for a Child's Play remake? Not really, especially seeing as how the original series is still ongoing. But we got one anyway. This Child's Play updates Chucky by making him a high-tech doll gone haywire rather than the trapped spirit of a murderer. It's an original and topical update to the story, and it puts a fresh twist on the whole Andy-Chucky dynamic. Mark Hamill also makes for a sinister Chucky, and Aubrey Plaza does an admirable job as Andy's mother. It's not as instantly iconic as the original Child's Play, but as far as remakes go, it's pretty darn good. It, it's time to play. Number 6, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. It was a long time coming, but it's finally here. It's the controversial series of kids' books released throughout the 80s and early 90s and the source of a national stir due to their disturbing content. While the stories themselves were quite spooky, it was Stephen Gamble's horrifying illustrations that were instantly burned into the minds of children everywhere. Guillermo del Toro helped bring this movie adaptation to life, and it lovingly recreated some of the most iconic monsters from the books, including Harold and the Pale Lady. There's a little something here for everyone, whether it's young children experiencing their first foray into horror, or adults wanting to bask in the glorious nostalgia of their own childhoods. <laughs> Number 5, Ready or Not. I honestly can't wait to be a part of your family. This is arguably THE horror comedy of 2019. The film stars the critically acclaimed Samara Weaving as Grace Ladomas, a newlywed who's hunted by her new in-laws as part of a bloody family ritual. It's just something we do when someone new joins the family. 
a game. It's like Get Out, Game Night, and Your Next were all thrown into a blender, as it effortlessly combines elements of the psychotic family horror, gory game-inspired thrills, and tension-breaking laughs. It's more of a dark comedy than straight horror, as it places a large emphasis on goofy laughs, but unlike a lot of films of its type, the jokes are actually funny, and the horror elements are actually scary. It's the best horror comedy blend we've seen in some time, and we can't recommend it enough. God damn it, Emily! I don't know what I'm doing! Number 4, It Chapter 2. It proved to be one of the biggest hits of 2017 thanks to its established brand, inventive scares, and stellar Stranger Things-esque cast. Yo will do! Yo will do! Yo will do! Yo will do! And more often than not, the second chapter proved to be a respectable and often horrifying follow-up. The scares were numerous and chilling, and this sequel included a fantastic cast that kept the movie afloat throughout its slower moments. We need to finish it. For good. Plus, we got more of Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise, and that's always a bonus. It Chapter 2 proved to be a worthy conclusion to the story, and it's absolutely worth seeing for fans of the genre. Experiencing the story of It is practically a horror rite of passage at this point. Hello. Number 3, Midsommar. I think it's very good you're coming. Thank you. Midsommar had a lot to live up to, as it was following Ari Aster's instant classic Hereditary. And for the most part, Midsommar proved to be a haunting movie that provided a unique twist on an established horror subgenre. Aster is a confident and assured director, and he controls this bizarre and deeply disturbing story with an impressive mastery of his craft. Florence Pugh is also a standout, and we can't wait to see more of her work in the future. If you've seen The Wicker Man, you'll probably get a similar experience with Midsommar, but make no mistake, this 2019 entry is as unique as it is bright. Literally. Close the door, we're not supposed to be in here! Number 2, The Lighthouse. Tell me, what's a timberman want with being a wiki? Just looking to earn a living. Just as we were waiting for Ari Aster's follow-up, Robert Eggers' latest film was also highly anticipated. Eggers is known for The Witch, which is often hailed as one of the best horror movies of the decade. The Lighthouse is arguably even better, and honestly, it'll be hard for him to top this one. Your beans. At a time when engaging original movies seem to be dwindling, The Lighthouse comes along and proves to everyone that there's still tons of potential to mine and explore within the horror genre. It's creepy, surreal, gorgeously filmed, and led by some truly commanding performances from Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. It's one of this decade's, let alone the year's, greatest horror accomplishments. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. What do you guys think will be our number one pick? Before we get there, here are a few frightening honorable mentions. We're gathered to hear you play. Now do it. Play the perfection. And this is hard to admit as an adherent of the here and now, and a denier of childish belief, but something truly goddamn strange is going on! It's not you. It's not you. You told Lewis about that place. And now we're suffering eternally. What happened to him? She was convinced that he was an imposter. Take the world. <laughs> Curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Us In the age of endless reboots, remakes, and sequels, Us was an exceptional and highly ambitious film, and we need to encourage more of its kind. Now, I thought I already done told y'all to get off my property, okay? So if y'all want to get crazy, we can get crazy! It features stellar performances and haunting cinematography in a highly tense and scary movie with a topical theme to think about. 
And while some think that it fell apart as a story, we would argue that it was never concerned with telling a straightforward story. At least not as straightforward as Get Out. This seems to be a group of individuals engaged in some sort of demonstration or protest. It's an allegory, and like most allegories, it asks us to contemplate, discuss, and come to understand something about a particular theme or topic. And in that regard, Us succeeded in spades, leaving us with a breathtaking horror movie that we're still thinking about today. Whoa, 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 whoa. So what do you guys think? What was your favorite horror movie of 2019? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to like and subscribe to Watch Mojo, and check out more great content right here.